звук, який став звичним для усіх наших міст. Це було 20 секунд. А ми чуємо це годинами, днями, тижнями. It was very, very, there was a lot of fighting going on the last three to four days, and then it slowed down today, and it's completely quiet for about nine hours now, 10 hours. Which is like the first break we had in, in a while. In a while yes. When the fighting is going on, it's kind of, uh, You can't just relax. It's uh, one of those things you lay in bed and you think, you know, do we run? Do we stay? What do we do? Because uh, sometimes air sirens, they would start like really close. You know that it's in the area. So the danger is close by somewhere. Sometimes you just hear them in the distance. So you know it's kind of far. So maybe you get lucky. So uh, in the past four days, it was kind of, um, it's just that unsettling feeling of, in your stomach, like, what do we do? So finally, we came out today, we walked the dog, and a lot of soldiers outside. Beyond a no doubt, this European capital is fast turning into a battlefield. There are troops on street corners and under bridges. Armored vehicles constantly crisscross the city, bolstering positions, waiting for the enemy. As in prior to that, you know they're around, but they kind of move about very quickly and quietly. So um, today it's just, they're out in the open everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> and it's kind of nice to see that because it makes you feel secure and safe. I know maybe it's just hopeful and wishful thinking, but it just makes you feel like you're protected. And so they're out moving about out in the open today in Kiev. It seems to be, according to military experts here, that Vladimir Putin is not getting good intel. He's not getting good military intelligence on the ground. And this has been a debacle so far on the part of his army, which on the face of it could be good news, but it can also mean that if he's desperate enough, he's going to be doing some things that are just absolutely unconventional. What, what are you hearing in Ukraine? Um, we're hearing the same thing from, from the Ukrainian authorities and they're expecting <clears throat> to be encircled or that, that they're going to try and encircle the the Donbass and put all their forces there and that chemical weapons could come into play. They're already using phosphorus over there, which is all illegal uh, under the Geneva Convention. But I think that the Ukrainians probably, you know, they know that they're coming just whether or not they have enough weapons and enough men and women at this point to to, to hold them off. That's the, that's the big thing. And then as far as Putin is concerned, they're not saying that he's crazy. Putin is considering himself a messiah. He's a messianic complex. Yeah, and yes. uh, he firmly believes that he is saving Russia by, you know, making Russia stronger and um, all of that, you know, nonsense. So at this point, you know, this is when somebody's obsessed with that idea, it's just that I don't see him giving up and just realizing all of a sudden like, oh yeah, I was wrong, maybe. Uh, right. Maybe I didn't really, so yeah. So nobody knows how this thing ends. Even the Ukrainians. And nobody does. And nobody trusts what the Russians say so far. And we also um, have this feeling like it's going to be quiet before storm. It's, it's just nice to have this break because last week was, it was just terrible. Uh, are, are you dissatisfied with what the West is doing? I'll give you a very clear answer on that. I understand that you can't do a no for it. <clears throat> I, I understand that you can't engage Russian troops or jets directly, but I don't understand why you can't give offensive weapons to Ukraine for fighter jets, anti-ship and anti-air missiles. I, I, I don't get it at all, whatsoever. 
I mean, Russia is not playing by the rules. Why should we? Well, Russia only understands force. You know, not Russia, but Putin. Putin and his crew understand force, and um, he's like a bully. And talk with bullies is force. They understand only one kind of uh, yeah, you angle. You have to punch him in the mouth, basically. <laughs> you have to kind of uh, stop it right then and there. So uh, talking with them and negotiating with them is, is just, it's a waste of time for everybody. They only understand if they're stopping, if they're stopped by force. Otherwise they will just be, well, you know, we did, we did that, maybe we could do something else. <laughs> this, this should not be a party line issue. This should be a united issue get us the weapons, get President Zelensky and the Ukrainian Armed Forces and the Ukrainian Air Force the weapons they need and they will wipe this thing up. Huge explosions woke everyone in Kiev as the Russian mission continues. Fiery debris falling onto residential buildings below. This is life in Kiev now, 